this is going to be a really good game. It's an almost 9k average pub game, which lasts for a very long time, which is also why this video is going to be in two parts. But let's get into the first part right now. My holiness deepens. So in this game, Crit actually randomed Enchantress, which is why he has so many items here. Normally, of course, you would only be able to afford Boots and Tango, but having this very fire and the Mango really helps you out. And it's going to plant a Sentry Ward here, which will block this camp. He's playing together an Enigma as the three position, where he's playing the four, and. Enigma is a hero who is really good at keeping the lane back using his demonic conversions. I talked about that in a previous video I did on Enigma, go check that one out. So because you're uh, pulling the lane back, it's very important to deny your opponent the opportunity to pull. So this is why they place the center wall to block this camp and then uh, once the one minute mark comes up, Enigma is going to uh, send one of his second batch of Eidolons to block this large camp and thereby denying any sort of pulling opportunity for the opponent. So what Crit is going to do right now here is just going to go into the jungle here. His, his skill already has enchant and he's going to use this for jungling and for ganking. Very old school style of enchantress play. And he's placing this ward here. It's very important not to place this ward when the lane is somewhere here otherwise I can see you, but the way he, he plays it was just, just in time to not get seen by this wave. And now he's just going to wait to see if there's going to be a courier here, otherwise he's just going to take one of these creeps and either do, do farming or ganking based on the creeps he gets. And he gets the set automata, which is an excellent creep for farming. It has kind of limited mana pool, but it doesn't really matter because you only get to get, have this creep for 30 seconds, so you can just spend all the mana you want, it just spams this ability and this allows you to very quickly clear these two camps and um, meanwhile he's still staying nearby here to see if uh, this uh, TA is getting a courier. And I find another creep here, these mud golems are quite strong but they're no longer quite as strong as they used to be. In the 723 patch their damage on this health boulder was lowered by 60% from 125 to 75, but they can still be quite decent. We see a was just used, so it's gonna hide out here, um, take over the Swapping Ripper to release those Shard Golems, and with the boots of speed it's very easy to get this Courier kill here. And now he's gonna use this Tornado and harass this TA. Of course Tornado really strong against TA because you can uh, go through these Refraction Charges, and coming in with these shard golems, one stun, next stun, and for a lot of damage you're coming in from impetus. And so it's gonna chase this hero. Unfortunately, I think this uh, I'm not sure if this hit actually hit, but the TA is gonna go here and try to deny herself on Roshan and succeed. But he also forced these two rotations, and now when is also quite low. No second hold build available yet. But he slows down the Venge and Boulder available here. First Boulder, second Boulder, just in time. And with some more impetuses, this Venge is eventually going to die. So it's a very active early game here for this Venge. He's gotten a lot of farm here. He's gotten a kill. And unfortunately, she didn't get the TA kill, but she almost got that. So this Venge is having a really good game so far. And the deal with these uh, mud golems is that they are not that strong of a creep. They are basically have this ability, but that, that's the like main main purpose of, of these creeps because they're sort of slow and awkward, don't deal that much right of damage. So you're most interested in these boulders, and by just uh, taking over these new mud golems, you have these shard golems that stick around for a while, and you can just uh, have lots and lots of boulders to gank your enemies. He's going to wait here for this enchant to come up and take this extra um, golem. Now it's going to have five boulders and with six of another creep he's going to have two more boulders. And with that he's just going to go and um, gank this ogre who I believe is playing Persistent 3 in the safe lane. 
Um, then we have some sort of offensive trialing going on here. So this ogre gets chased, but and there's also here a slow available, which he is not using. He's sort of messing up his uh, his micro here. I think the, one of the main reasons for this is that he did not watch my Chen micro guide. We're going to a super secret method of using these shard golems and similar creeps more effectively. Uh, a method by which you can uh, use these hurl boulders without having to tap through each individual golem. So if he had used that, it would have probably um, been a kill there. But he's going to go in um, right now with these golems. He's going to have another couple of boulders here and he can chase this ogre. Of course, he's much uh, faster than him. And uh, also if this ogre uses a bloodless, you can also dispel that. So there's also a uh, available use of enchant here. And he gets the kill. And look at this responsible courier usage. He puts his courier up here and there's just very little chance of this courier getting sniped. Whereas if you just uh, automatically tell it to go to hero and you're doing the sort of roaming, it's very easy to just get your courier killed. And he's going for a treads here. Very strong item on Enchantress. You love the attack speed and this extra stats is very useful. You're quite a mana hungry hero, so thread switching is very efficient. And also you're a very low HP hero, so strength threads are also very valuable. He's gonna go in here, do some poking here with this Santa Conqueror. And thanks to the slow, he can land this stump here and do some damage to that Venge, but there's just too many heroes here and he has to back off. But the Santa Conqueror is about to run out, so he's gonna just gonna run it at this Venge, force her to use an ability here. This is a very mana intensive stun for the for the Venge, so uh, this is quite nice to force out that stun. And now he's gonna look for something that's a bit more aggressive than this Frost Mage. Find some more Mud Golems. Very Mud Golem heavy game here so far. And he's actually leveling up enchant here. This is kind of unusual. Most enchantresses these days leave this level 1 and instead uh, max out impetus first with maybe like 2 points in nature's attendance. So the problem with nature's attendance is that it's not a very good ability level 1 anymore. You kind of need 2 points for it to be good. And so if you want to have 2 points in this early and you also want this max at a reasonable time, you kind of have to leave this enchanted level 1, which um, means you miss out on all of these creeps. But as you're going to see in this game, this creeps are actually quite strong. The growth is venomancer, but thanks to this ward and the tower revealing the smoke, it um, gets revealed and venomancer can retreat here in time, but unfortunately locking himself in with that ward. We've been looking at Ench all the time, and Ench is doing fantastically, but if you look at the overall net worth here, it's a 3k lead for the Dyer, and it's 2 to 11. Both kills here are from Enchantress. So even though Enchantress is having a good game, literally everyone else on the team is not. Well, Enigma is doing okay. Uh, he has pretty good farm and uh, good levels, but everyone else is really struggling. Mid is just uh, completely lost, and this uh, safe lane slug is extremely poor. But they do get a one kill here, so that's something. They go on Venomancer here, Black Hole is available, and this Enigma is just gonna use Black Hole. Maybe slight overkill, I think maybe they probably wouldn't have gotten this Venomancer without Black Hole, but there's a good chance Enigma might have died in the process. So I think that's, that's uh, perfectly fair use of Black Hole, especially if you're behind like this in a game. You don't want to be uh, too stingy with using your abilities. They're pushing a tower right now, and this is one of the best tower pushing creeps. These skeletons do a lot of damage. They have 24 damage, and they have a base attack time of 1.00 seconds. So it's a lot of DPS coming on. There's normal damage, which is very good against uh, towers. So this is an excellent creep to get for tower pushes. And you see in this game, Enigma has gone for a Dominator. Pretty standard Enigma item. Not in every game, but it's a strong Enigma item. And for some reason, Enchantress also wants to go for Dominator. I don't quite get that. Originally, she had this Gloves of Haste queued up for a Midas. But for some reason, she thinks she also wants to get a Dominator. I don't think this is, a, this is the right decision. If you want to go for Dominator, you generally want to get it very early. 
Um, so in this case, uh, getting it like before this treads, just leaving this uh, brown moves and then going straight for the dominator with maybe like a stick thrown in or something. So this dominator is going to be very late, and if you get it that late, it's not that good anymore. Like, it, it wouldn't be that great even if Enigma hadn't gone for dominator, but since he has, he also uh, going to have this aura twice. So I, I think this is really a mistake. I think you should just go straight into a Dragonlance or something like that. In these games, it's important not to get too over eager with fighting. They are behind, he knows that they're behind, so you you can't play too aggressively and something you just have to farm. And there's some very nice farming. He stacked this camp, took the Wildwing Ripper, and now he's using this tornado to clear this camp while his hero is farming this nearby camp, so he's still getting XP for these creeps when they die. And I can just use this uh, Wobbling Ripper, he actually should use it to right click here. Um, and now he's farmed this camp and he's taking the Center Conqueror, who is a strong creep on Ench because he's just a more aggressive creep that can just get in there and just do something more immediately. Enigma and Ench are just doing some light farming as Enigma gets gone on. And in this fight you can just do some right clicking here using your impetus of course. And it's very important to look at the cooldown here and see when you can use the impetus hits and when not. As long as you don't have impetus at level 4, it doesn't have uh, a continuous use. So you have to look out for which stacks are going to go long and which are not and um, adjust accordingly. It's especially important at uh, the lower levels when you have this long like 6 or 4 second cooldown at the start. Whereas at this, at this stage you can just leave it on autocast in fights. And just uh, right click so you don't have to worry about constantly having to um, uh, to cast this manually and you can um, worry a bit more about things like uh, positioning and controlling your creep. TA shows up and it's time for entry retreat, he's quite low but uh, his team wants to fight so they do fight and and this tornado here which is just providing a little bit of a slow and there's some damage and in this fight you just have to be very careful not to uh, get killed you don't have heal yet because of this uh, build that he's gone for so they just take their win they got the one kill and now it's time to be very careful and both teams kind of back off here some positioning here from the, from the venom and uh, not sure what he's uh, hoping to accomplish here he gets gone on here by our invoker and Venomancer is in the promised list. Stick, stick charges, uses them now, but he is going to die. And that is a dominating enchantress. Somehow a creep have made it up here and Enchantress is farming it. And now they see that all this time this TA was actually rushing, so Venomancer died for a good cause and for some reason. Uh, he sticks around here, crit does, and he gets killed. That was a bit silly, because I mean, this is like a very logical move to make um, if you know that the enemy has just rushed. So farming this wave in this position is quite uh, quite foolhardy, especially if you don't have vision up here. A little skirmish here, they find uh, some heroes here, and uh, two heroes next to each other, perfect black hole setup, and Enigma goes for it. They get the Aegis and one kill. And now it's time to retreat. But for some reason they're still in the fight here. And they go in here on the Ogre Magi. And this is not a particularly good fight here. They agree with those two kills, or this is the second kill here. But now they're in trouble. Invoker is very very low. And gets slowed down by the trap. Here in this position, you could have taken over this Venge Illusion with the slow. Instead, he's going to use a slow on Venomancer. He gets this kill, but um, this is on the whole uh, not the best fight. But given how far they're behind, it's uh, it's reasonable. They also use the buyback here as far as uh, Venomancer was buybacking. And Enchantress is very low, but still staying alive thanks to this IO. But now they have to retreat. And Enchantress is getting healed from the spirits but this Earthshaker Echo Slam puts an end to a life 
Patrick also playing with his own life. And this is a very chaotic fight, it's not quite clear who's coming on top here. But um, this Venge also going to die. And this is just a very indecisive fight. A bunch of lives were exchanged, some bodies were exchanged. And no one really was the clear winner in this fight. After this Dominator, Ench has gone for a drum. Really strong traditional Ench item. Unfortunately, no longer has the mana region, which was uh, very strong on Ench, obviously. But it gives you uh, movement speed as it always did, and now also a passive attack speed aura. So it just offers more attack speed on the whole, which is great for Enchantress. Here, that's uh, very attack speed hungry. That's the primary or easiest way of boosting your damage aside from just adding extra range. Not sure about the Seven's Helmet here. Um, you definitely just need to get a Dragon Lance on Enchantress and uh, um, upgrade that to a Pike. It's just a perfect Ench item. Right now, Drum has been used and he's trying to kill his Venomancer, but uh, for some reason, he's not healing. He had to heal up all this time and didn't use it. If he used that heal, he would have survived much longer here. Probably would still lose that fight, but um, it wouldn't be that one-sided. And now they have three dead. This invoker almost dead, barely survives. And it's a disaster for the Radiant. Another big um, gold change as well as XP change. And of course this tower will also be pushed. Invoker goes for a play, tries to kill this low HP Venomancer. Just get the kill, but now it's a question of getting out. So they're all on him. And some nice splashing here from this TA. All his ultimates being used. And there's a dead Invoker, a dead IO. And now it's Hygo pushing time for the Dyer. They're up one hero, they're up 11k gold. It's not going to be an easy defense. Slark shows up and a swap being used here, but um, Slark immediately goes in this and survives, meaning that Venge is now in deep trouble and she dies, not really getting very much. So, this was maybe not the play from Venge here. There's a fight up here, um, and it's actually down here. This is a replay bug, this uh, on the mini map. She TPs up here. And they don't have the uh, numbers advantage because Ogre is somewhere down here. And unfortunately, they don't get any sort of kills here. But here he gets a kill. Venomans are blinking up here using his ultimates. He is not going to pay with his life. Actually, yes, he is. But uh, everyone here on the Radiant dies. Invoker tries to get away. But. He is being revealed and he dies. So now four of our heroes are dead. They're down 13k gold. Will they recover from this game? Will Enchantress finally finish her Hurricane Pike? Will we see some literal spronking in this game? How many rapists will be bought? Will our Radiant heroes make a comeback? Find out on the next episode of The Church of Obelis. If you don't want to miss the stunning conclusion to this almost 9k pub game, subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And in the meantime, watch this video personally selected by the grace of Obelis working through the YouTube algorithm and Obelis Willing. I'll see you there.